A very good day dear students. In this video, we will study chapter number 8, Measurement of Time and Motion for Class 7, Science. We will cover half of the chapter in this video. So, let's start our video. First of all, we will see what we are going to learn today in this video. Measurement of time, various devices used in the history to measure time, construction of simple water clock, again pendulum clock. Let's start study with a short story. Prerna and her sister were watching a sports channel. Prerna loved running and was the fastest girl in her district's 100 meter race. She was now training for the state level and dreamed of running for India. Watching old Olympic races, Prerna was amazed at how exact the timing was even when runners finished together. At school, they used a stopwatch to time races. Her mother wore a watch, her sister checked time on a phone and her uncle had a braille and a talking watch. There was also a big clock at school. Prerna wondered how people in the past told time without these devices. Now we will explore the history of time and learn more about how people have measured it over the ages. Long ago, humans became interested in keeping the track of time. They noticed many natural events happened in regular cycles like the sun rising and setting, the phases of the moon and changing seasons. These cycles helped people to create calendars. A day was defined by the cycle of the sun rising and setting. Next, people wanted to know the time during the day. Since there were no clock or watches, they invented devices to measure smaller parts of the day. To measure time within a day, they invented devices such as sundials, water clocks, hour glasses, candle clocks. Sundials These devices use the shadow cast by the sun's light on an object to show the time of the day. As the sun moved, the shadow's position changed. Water clocks these devices measure time using water flow. One type had water flowing out of a marked vessel, while another type used a ball with a hole that sank when filled with water. Our glasses, also known as sand clocks, these devices used sand flowing from one bulb to another to measure time. Candle clocks. These were the candles with markings that showed the time as they burned down. Now we will see some fascinating facts about the sundial. The world's largest stone sundial called the Samrat Yantra was built about 300 years ago at the Jantar Mantar in Jaipur, Rajasthan. This site is a UNESCO World Heritage Place with many ancient astronomical instruments. The Samrat Yantra stands 27 meters tall. Its shadow moves very slowly, about 1 millimeter every second and falls on a scale that can measure time as precisely as every two seconds. Like all the sundials, it shows local solar time. So a small correction is needed to convert this to Indian standard time. 
Now let's try to make a simple water clock. You need some materials to make a simple water clock. A used transparent plastic bottle with cap, drawing pin, water, ink or food color. First of all, you have to prepare the bottle. You have to cut the plastic bottle into two halves roughly in the middle. Then make a hole. Use a drawing pin to make a small hole in the cap of the bottle. Assemble the clock. Place the upper part of the bottle with the hole in the cap upside down on the lower half. Fill with water. Fill the upper part of the bottle with water. You can add a few drops of ink or color to make the water level more visible. Start the clock. The water will start dripping into the lower part of the bottle. Use a watch to mark the water level at 1 minute intervals until all the water has dripped down. Resetting. Pour the water from the lower part back into the upper part. Now watch the water drip into the lower part and mark each time it reaches a level you previously marked. Each mark indicates that one more minute has passed. In ancient India, time was measured using shadows and water clocks. The earliest mention of measuring time by shadows comes from the Earth Shastra by Cotelier in 2nd century BCE to 3rd century CE. Around 530 CE, Varha Mihir gave a precise way to calculate the time using the shadow of a vertical stick. Water clocks, where water flowed out of a vessel, were also described in ancient text, like the Earth Shastra. These early water clocks were not very accurate because the flow of water slowed as the water level dropped. To solve this, the sinking ball water clock called Ghatika Yantra was developed and mentioned by Aryabhat and other astronomical texts. The Ghatika Yantra was used continuously in Buddhist monasteries, royal palaces and town squares. When the ball sank, time was announced by drums, shells or gongs. Although pendulum clocks replaced the Ghatika Yantra by the late 19th century, it was still used in religious places for rituals. The invention of pendulum clock in the 17th century was a major breakthrough, significantly improving the accuracy of mechanical timekeeping. Now, Let's know a scientist, Galileo Galilei. The pendulum clock was invented in 1656 and patented in 1657 by Christian Huygens. He was inspired by the earlier work of Galileo Galilei. Galileo noticed a lamp swinging back and forth in a church. Using his own pulse to measure time, he found that the lamp took the same amount of time for each swing. After testing different pendulums, Galileo discovered that the time for one complete swing stayed the same for a pendulum of a fixed length. This discovery helped Huygens to create the accurate pendulum clock. Dear students, we have completed 
these subtopics in this video. Measurement of time, various devices used in the history to measure time, construction of simple water clock at home and Huggins pendulum clock. Now there is a question. You have to try it yourself. What device measures time using the flow of water? A. Candle clock B. Our glass C. Sundial D. Water clock Now there are some questions to enhance your learning. Question number 1. What ancient methods did humans use to measure time based on natural cycles? Question number 2. Fill in the blank. The world's largest stone sundial, the dash, was built around 300 years ago at the Jantar Mantar in Jaipur. Question number 3. True or false? Our glasses measure time using water flow. Question number 4. What is the significance of Samrat Yantar? in relation to time measurement. Question number 5. What should you do to reset the water clock after timing? Question number 6. What are the three main ways time is measured today? Dear students, we will complete this chapter in our next video. That's all from this video. Thank you very much.